All right, let's talk about fourth position because uh, some questions, I got some questions regarding fourth position. Some asked genuinely and some just trying to challenge me. So, okay, I, challenge accepted. Here's what I can tell you about fourth. Okay, so there's this question about uh, crossed fourth position or open fourth position. Okay, <coughs> we need to break this up into two bits. So let's talk about male dancing and then women dancing on point because it's, it's a different, slightly different consideration. The most pure preparation for a pirouette, and this is for men mainly, but of course ladies can do it too, uh, especially on flat. Point, I probably wouldn't recommend it. it would if I'm in the room, let's, we could give it a try if the person's strong enough and placed enough. But basically with flat shoes on, Preparation from second is the most pure. And you'll see Vladimir Vasiliev, this was his preparation. Um, who else did this all the time? Uh, Yuri Soloviev, another brilliant Russian Soviet dancer, he, he did it from there. You see, Baryshnikov did it from open fourth most of the time. I'm sure you can find him doing it probably from second as well. <coughs> so, this is the deal about fourth. Okay, now why is, let me finish, why is second the most pure position? Because, again, it's this idea of taking out any extra adjustments. Okay, so from second, just, you come straight in to retire. That's it, no nonsense. Plie, straight in. There isn't an adjustment to make, there's just this, right, from the knee down. Fourth position, you have to go through passe, to get the leg to retire, how else? It doesn't matter. Even if you even if you start turning, now you're now you're doing passe with a rotation, right? So now you're you're adding an adjustment that has to be made, right? So it's better have a clean if you're going to do it from fourth, have a clean here and then turn. I mean, it's obviously I'm I'm not getting into the details here. For the leg to begin in the back and end up in the front, you're going through passe one way or the other. Now, if you've seen like with Skylar Brandt or whomever, you see that sometimes this happens in all variety of ways. Or, you know, it's, it's late, like they'll start turning and then the leg has to come, but it's still going, it ha now it's through a passe and it turns in and it turns out and now you're adding adjustments as opposed to removing them, which is what we want to do. So the criticism I got is, they said, someone somewhere, some teacher said, well, open fourth is not a position. Yes, it is. It is the, the most important position, if, if, turning from fourth. And I'm going to tell you why. As I just said, you have to come through passe. So if you're in basically first position, tendu back to fourth, it's just here. Very little adjustment. If you're crossed, now you have to take your leg here, then here, then here. It's an extra adjustment. And it can cause swinging, and this goes up, and you know, there's all kinds of things going on. This is why, you know, when I make a point pedagogically, I've thought it through quite a lot, right? So the, the, the thing to learn here is we want to remove as many adjustments as possible. And this is just a concept that follows through especially choreography, and see this is what's frustrating to me sometimes to, to coach, particularly just to coach at all. This is why I'm not into coaching particularly, unless it's my own choreography, because I understand how to clean those things up, how to remove any unnecessary adjustments, and it just cleans everything up. The dancer feels much better. That's part of um, creating that quality of movement. You have to take out the adjustments, because that's what, it gets sloppy. And unfortunately, you know, when you see different choreographers' versions of this class or that, I can see right away that that is not part of it, that that was not part of their process, which is to say, okay, let's take these steps and let's like pedagogically take it apart and remove any excess adjustments, okay? That's that. Now, fifth position, so let's talk about point work now. Okay, so being on point is very, very different than being flat or demi-point. 
So this, this 90 degree, roughly 90 degree angle of the leg to the foot, this is very awkward, very awkward mechanically. It, it doesn't work well, right? Even demi point, even with a high demi point, okay, you can kind of get the leg straight. It's still, there's this awkward angle that you have to get on. Point work is something else. You can get an absolutely straight leg, straight from the hip to the, to the toe, right? <coughs> Where that gets goofy is uh, going from the ball all the way up to point. There's, and, and now look, if the ballerina is placed and strong, I mean really strong and coordinated, there isn't anything to that anymore because what you'll realize down the road here is that the toes don't do anything, right? There's, there's so much, I call it like push-ups with the toes from ball to toe, and this is something we need to get away from at a certain point. I'll, I'll go into this in the courses so it's absolutely clear, but suffice to say for now, this idea of pushing with the toes to get you up is, creates instability. Again, it's one of those adjustments versus pulling oneself up with the core, hips, and back, and having all those things coordinated. But on point, um, what you'll see if you watch like uh, Maximova, what I see is a lot of the great ballerinas tend to find themselves in kind of a third-ish position. So their, their, their uh, fourth is not completely open, it's something like a little bit of a third position. Now, ultimately, when a dancer is trained, it's up to them. You stand however you want. You want to do open fourth, crossed second. It doesn't make any difference to me. There isn't a set rule. There's just what works for the, the individual dancer. Training a dancer, this is different. Okay. So what, what happens is we're, we're all in a hurry to get into fifth position, right? But then, but without correct placement and strength in that placement and coordination in that placement, the hips are going to be, you're going to create torsion everywhere. The hips are going to be, the hips are going to follow the front leg, which is going to do a number on the knee and the ankle and the feet, and the feet are going to roll. They're going to be, the legs are not going to be straight. This is a guarantee. So we need to deprioritize cross positions in, the, in training, in the beginning of training. In fact, you don't need to introduce cross positions until the requisite strength and coordination is there because it doesn't do any good. It, it just, it's, again, it's going the wrong way in a one-way road. If, if, if a student or a dancer is not absolutely strong and coordinated in first position, in second position, in open fourth position, crossing the legs is just going to make things go off the rails quicker and they're going to get hurt. So yes, there, there are these sort of, if you go by a syllabus, there's these sort of concepts of, okay, if you're in first position, tendu back, tendu straight back. If you're in fifth position, so say the rules, you just tendu from fifth, right? So you're, then you'll find yourself in a cross fourth. This is not, this is not the, the best way to think about this. In real life, when you're dancing like choreographically, it's what positions you get in and out of depends on what the steps are or what the preparations are, okay? So let's say, let's say you're in fifth, tight fifth, right? And the next move is pirouette from fourth. Now, as I just said, what you want is the least number of adjustments possible. So does it make sense to stay crossed? So that then you still have to make this adjustment to then put, bring your leg through passe. If you're in fifth because you just landed a jump or whatever, you can tendu to an open fourth if that's what you need. Let's say that's where you're comfortable as a dancer executing pirouette from. You see, these, 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 these um, academic rules exist for training purposes and in particular for sort of the, the first few years, the beginning, to get things placed, there are these rules. In a coaching setting, when a dancer is already trained or to some extent, those rules are not as strict, right? It depends on the dancer and their body and the geometry of their body. 
So for me, I just look at who's in front of me and what their deal is and what they have to dance. And that's how I decide how to coach and what decisions to make. So if, you know, if you find yourself in fifth position and the next movement requires fifth position, that's the best position to be in to do whatever the movement is, well, great. Tandu from fifth, that's fine. Fifth to fifth or cross positions. If, however, you're in fifth and the next movement uh, for, for the dancer requires to be in an open position, well, then you just tandu or however tanlie, whatever it is, to the open position. So we need to look at ballet technique as more of, again, I think a language is a good analogy. Like, it, it, it's, not, there aren't the, it's not such a rigid set of rules that you, you, you must you know, comply with. It's a language, it's, it's a set of tools, it's a set of understandings that you can use and weave creatively depending on what the objective is. And this is where, I, this is where I'm at, this is how I approach ballet. It's, I've got a set of tools and understandings and a bunch of stuff that I can use however I want in order to get the best possible result. Now, all of this is going to be covered in the, on the Institute like in a very organized way so you can understand how to, to do exactly this. But anyway, I just want to cover fourth position and cross positions and why we need to maybe think about this a little bit differently. All right?